What up, what up, what up, New York Giant Nation? It's your boy, Mac the Giants fan, coming back at y'all, man. It's been a long, been a minute since I just dropped a random impromptu video, man. But look, nah, I gotta, gotta talk about some things, man. Like, like this whole past week, we've been doing this free agency thing. All the whole league been doing the free agency thing, man. New York Giant Nation, I love y'all, man. I love y'all to death, man. Some of y'all got to chill out, relax, man. Every move... Every free agent acquisition can't be an all-star. They can't be a superstar, man. That's just not the way it works, man. You got to add players that's going to provide some depth, you know what I mean, to your lineup, depth to your team. So some of these, so most of our pickups have been so far pretty much other than, you know, pretty much locking up Leo. Pretty much everybody else has been like depth and depth players and stuff like that we've added on, man. Like, and you got to understand, that's part of the team, man. Like, like yesterday was my last straw, man. Yesterday on social media, people were absolutely trashing the signing of Kyle Rudolph. Like, why is signing Kyle Rudolph a bad signing to you? It gives you a good veteran presence at the tight end position. A guy that can actually catch the damn football. And a guy that maybe can help out the younger Evan Ingram develop into a better player and maximize that kid's potential. Another signing everybody was just trashing yesterday is Mike Glennon. Why? Is there something wrong with upgrading your backup quarterback? You have a problem with that? It seems like you must do. Or what do you want to go out there and just, who do you want to bring in like some starter, an actual starter to be the backup quarterback? Like what? It doesn't work that way. Some of the things people were saying, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I don't, I, I try to under, try to understand your football knowledge. We didn't bring Kyle Rudolph in to be nobody, be no savior of this team. We didn't bring Mike Glennon in to be the future or anything like that. If we brought Mike Glenn, Mike Glennon in, cause he's a good, reliable, solid backup quarterback. He's a good, solid backup quarterback. Yeah, he's not a guy you want to bring in to be to depend on to be your starter, but he's a good, reliable backup quarterback. Has a great arm. I mean, Daniel Jones has not played a full 16 in either one of his first two seasons. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's likely he may not again this year either. So it's good to have a guy like Mike Glennon who can at least maybe win you a game or two if necessary. Another pickup we had we we signed Devonte Booker. We well we announced. You know, verbally made, they had the verbal commitment on Monday from Devontae Booker. People, I've heard some of the most outlandish comments, like, why would we get like a, a running back that's like a fourth string running back? He's, A, not a fourth string running back. He's a legitimate backup, number two running back in the NFL. As, as legit as it gets in that role, as a matter of fact. One of the better number backup running backs in the league. Cause we we're not a, we're not one of the few we're not one of the team we're one of the few teams that has a workhorse starting running back. So a number two running back for us is exactly what he is. He's number two running back. He's not a one A. He's not here to be a committee part of a committee. Saquon Barkley is our starting running back, and he will be the workhorse. But every once in a while, for a series here and a series there, a guy like Devonte Booker is a very reliable and solid number two guy. So I don't know what the, and we're only paying the guy like two million bucks. So what is the complaints about? I, I don't, I don't get it. Every, I know people do watch social, my social media pages between Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. I've seen giant fans all week, absolutely trash every single acquisition, every single one. They've had a problem with even resigning Leo. They're finding a problem with trying to sign Galladay. They're finding problems with this person, finding problems with Kyle Rudolph, Glennon, uh, the Devontae Booker, everybody. Like, oh, why are we getting these guys? Why are we getting that? Why are we getting this person? Why are we getting that person? Because we're building a team here. A team. Not, not, not just trying to go out there and get a bunch of all-star like we did in 2016. We spent all that money, got those three big names on free and free agent on defense, and sure, we made the playoffs. <laughs> and they ain't did a damn thing since. And none of them jokers is on the team no more. Not near one of them. Sad part is most of y'all cats that's probably doing all this complaining this year is the same jokers that was complaining last year when we signed Blake Martinez. And y'all try to say, gave him too much money. 
Bradbury gave him too much money. Well, those two is probably arguably our two best defensive players this season. So I'm glad we brought those guys in. And to be quite frank, I'm not mad at what's been going on this all this so far in the early part of free agency this season. I'm not mad at it. I think we've added some good depth, some pieces on depth for depth. You know what I mean? Nothing. Sure, we didn't add any major stars yet. That still could happen. It's not out of the realm. Everybody talking about the salary cap. I'm going to tell you right now. It's the reason why we're sitting at home and those guys are NFL GMs. The guys that do this job. Because they know how to move money around, finagle things, make it happen. So I don't, all that, when people start complaining about that stuff, I don't even want to be hearing the money thing. They know how to free up. These guys know how to free up money. It's part of what they do for a living. So, you know what I mean? Everybody, we got to relax, calm down, and chill out, man. Let this thing work. Because right now, even looking, listening to the media, once again, they all counting us out. Let them count us out. It's like they didn't even watch our games last year and watch our progress last year. Throughout the, yeah, we finished 6-10, and 10, but throughout the season, we clearly started playing better football in all phases because the defense was nowhere near as good as it was late in the season, early in the season. Not even close. Daniel Jones, yeah, his numbers didn't reflect it, but he started playing a lot better football, a lot cleaner football late in the season. The O-line started playing a lot better, and I get it. We, 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 let, we released maybe our best, more consistent offensive lineman. Sure we did. But we're clearly, we clearly have a plan. We're, going, we're clearly going young. I mean, it's pretty obvious. That's what we're doing. So let this thing work. I'm all behind Joe Judge, and I'm definitely, definitely very curious to see what Daniel Jones can do with weapons, with actual weapons around him, better weapons around him, better O-line, healthy Saquon Barkley back in the lineup. Let's give this kid a chance. Like I said, this is it. This is a do or die for him. But let's give him a fair chance because this year he's going to have the best groceries he's had to work with. Straight up. Straight up. This will be the best offensive talent he's had around him when we start this season this year. And like I said, we haven't even had the draft yet. So who knows what, what, what can happen when we get hit the draft either. Like It's so many, so much, so much time for things to develop. And I'm going to assume this is going to be a much more normal offseason as well. I'm going to assume we're going to have actual mini camps and stuff this, this, this offseason because the virus is, is a little bit more under control. With, with, the, with the what you call it's out there and everything. The, uh, you know, the, the vaccinations and everything. People getting vaccinations and everything. So that stuff's under, under a lot more control now. So I'm sure we're going to get a more normal offseason. Let this thing pan out. DJ, year two, same offense. He hasn't had a luxury of that yet so let's see what happens because his offense should now be grilled in his head so that's also not an excuse he's not spending part of the season learning the offense he now knows it fully 100 percent. so it's just a matter of going out there getting the reps getting used to your teammates again and letting the man do the damn thing man y'all got to relax and chill out because some of the mental the mentality some of y'all got you see this man's name on the back of this jersey right here? You see that name right there? With the mentality some of y'all got? This man would have probably never got a fair chance. Because he was just simply a wide receiver from UMass. That I'm sure nobody heard of until he had that world famous preseason game against the Jets. Nobody knew who Victor Cruz was. So you got to relax and pan out because I'm going to tell you right now, man, I love Dalvin Thomason. But the people that were saying, acting as if he was more valuable to this defense than Leonard Williams, come on, man. Chill out with that, man. I like Dalvin a lot, but he's not quite on par with Leonard Williams. Dalvin is a good football player. Leonard Williams can pretty much be a great one, as he demonstrated last year. You're never going to see those kind of numbers from Dalvin Thomason ever. So I love the guy, but he, I mean, look, he moved on. 
he moved on. We don't know what happened behind the scenes, if there was any negotiations. We don't know that. None of us do. But y'all, some of y'all speak as if y'all be in the office in the meetings and know exactly what be going down. No, y'all don't, man. You don't know if we made any effort to bring Wayne Gorman back, but I'm sure we probably did. But Wayne Gorman's out there looking for uh, opportunities to start because he, did, he he put some he put some stuff down last year. You know what I mean? He built his resume up last year. You know what I mean? And, and replacing Saquon Barkley for the most of the pretty much most of the season. So yeah, he may get an opportunity to go somewhere and compete for a starting job. Or at least more of a rotational situation, because here obviously you know, like I said, here in New York, Saquon's a workhorse. So if you come in here to be a running back in New York, you are playing behind Saquon Barkley more so than with him. So it is what it is. People speaking like it, like they like y'all know what went down. Like I'm sure I'm almost assume we made an effort to at least to at least negotiate and talk with Wayne Gorman or Dalvin Thomason, but hey. Things didn't work out for whatever reasons, you know what I mean? And those fellas moved on. I'm pretty sure what Minnesota paid Dalvin was more than we, were, we would have been willing to pay him here. And so, so be it. That man went, he went and got paid. Like, I don't, I don't understand. But, uh, that's all I got for y'all right now, man. I just had to get that off my chest, man. Like, y'all got to chill out, relax, man. Y'all, y'all been too, like, like too high strung this week, man. Saying some crazy outlandish things, man. I had a cat tell me Dalvin Thomason was was the best player on our defense last year. I'm like, look, he's a good guy, but I can think of about five guys that meant more to our defense last year than Dalvin Thomason did. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's just the truth. Dalvin Thomason was good, but come on, you exaggerating with that? We the best, who was the best player on our defense? While we let him go and, and sign Leonard Williams. While we give Logan Ryan a new contract. Come on, man. This is a business. It is the NFL. Get over it. You're not going to be able to sign everybody. You're not going to be able to keep everybody. And, and to be quite frank, man, you're not going to be able to get everybody you want. It just don't work that way. It's like, y'all. some of y'all... Some of y'all, I don't want to like, I hate to, I hate to question how much y'all really are fans, but y'all got y'all priorities way out of whack and way out of order. Because right now, this team don't need to be torn down anymore. It needs us to support, rally, and support, man. True blue. No matter what. I don't give a damn if we go 0-16 or if we go 16-0. I'm going to love this team the same. Because that's where my heart is. True blue. New York Giant football, man. All the way. And that's all I got for y'all, man. If y'all feeling what I'm talking about, man, come to my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit them likes, man, ring that bell so you know when I'm dropping new content. It's your boy, Mac the Giants fan. That's M-A-C-D-A Giants fan. Peace.